Well, <laughs> I shouldn't answer any questions on the subject, but I will. <laughs> uh, you know, there's, there's all kinds of people watching this that are long Bitcoin, and there's nobody that's short, and nobody, nobody wants their windpipe stepped on. And I don't blame them. I don't like people to step on my windpipe. But I would say this, that if all the people, this, if the people in this room uh, owned all of the farmland in the United States, uh, and you offered me a 1% interest in it, and you said for a 1% interest in all the farmland in the United States, uh, pay me, uh, pay our group. Um, well, let's see. Ten trillion. One. Uh, pay us this bargain price, $25 billion. I'll write you a check this afternoon. $25 billion. Now I own 1% of the farmland. If you tell me you own... 1% of the apartment houses in the United States, <coughs> uh, and you offer me uh, a 1% interest, so I'll have a 1% interest <coughs> in all the apartment houses in the country, and you want whatever it may be for it. And call it another $25 billion or something. I'll write you a check. You know, it's very simple. Now, if you told me you owned all of the Bitcoin in the world and you offered it to me for $25, I wouldn't take it because what would I do with it? Um, I have to sell it back to you one way or another. I mean, maybe I'd be the same people, but it isn't going to do anything. The apartments are going to produce rental and, and the farms are going to produce food. And uh, uh, if I've got all the Bitcoin, you know, I'm back where whatever his name was, who may or may not have existed, was you know, 15 years ago. If I've got it all, he could create a mystery about it. But everybody knows what I'm like. I mean, so if I'm trying to get rid of it, you know, people will say, well, uh, you know, why should I buy some Bitcoin from you? <laughs> I mean, why don't you call it Buffett coin? You know, make your own or something. What? Do something. But uh, I'm not going to give you anything for it. And you'd be right, incidentally. But... That explains the difference between productive assets and something that depends on the next guy paying you more than the last guy got. Now, net, if you look at it, a lot of commissions have been paid. and there's, I mean, there's all kinds of frictional costs that are very real that somebody has paid to a bunch of people who facilitate this game. But whatever... One group of the public is taken out, or one group of owners, has come in from other people. I mean, it's other people have entered the room and they move money around, but, but no money has, there's no more money in the room. It's just changed hands with a lot of maybe fraud and costs involved and, you know, a whole bunch of things you lose. You know, you forget the numbers or forget the equation. The, uh, uh, you can do that with a lot of things. I mean, it's been done throughout history. Uh, certain things have value that don't produce something tangible. I mean, you can, you can say a great painting you know, probably will have some value 500 years from now. may not, but the odds are pretty good that if it was a big enough name at some point, there will be a few things. I mean, it, you know, you can uh, you can find something. But if somebody wants to sell you a pyramid or something, and you can charge the viewers, or you know, it'll be around a long time and, and won't produce anything. But 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 uh, people will find it interesting to go there because they're better about the pyramids. But basically, uh, assets to be to have value, they have to deliver something to somebody and uh, uh, and there's only one currency that's acceptable in the United States. I mean, you can, you can come up with all kinds of things. Uh, we can put up Berkshire coins or, you know, we can put up Berkshire money or anything like that. But uh, we get in trouble, I guess, if we call it money. But uh, in the end, 
this is money, and and there's no reason in the world why the United States government, whose currency people prefer, I mean, we literally there's 2.3, just under 2.3 trillion, just of these little pieces of paper floating around some places. Seven thousand for every man, woman, and child in the United States, and of course most of them probably aren't in the United States. Who knows? But. This is the only thing that's money. And anybody that thinks the United States is going to change the way they let Berkshire money replace theirs, you know, is out of their mind. I mean, and, uh, uh, so anyway, uh, with those few deficiencies, uh, you know, you can, whether it goes up or down in the next year or five years, ten years, I don't know. But the one thing I'm pretty sure of is that it it doesn't it doesn't multiply, it doesn't produce anything. It's it's uh, it's got a magic to it, and people have attached magics to lots of things. I mean, the gold on Wall Street, you know, create magic. You know, you know, we are not an insurance company; we're a tech company. Well, they're an insurance company, but a dozen people or so have raised a lot of money. They just say, just don't pay any attention to the fact that we sell insurance. We are a tech company. Well, in the end, they wrote insurance, and overwhelmingly, they've lost a lot of money since then. It, 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 you, can, you, can, you can make up things that work well in getting money from other people, and that's why. Welcome, fellow investors and financial enthusiasts. Today, we delve into the world of cryptocurrency, specifically Bitcoin, and why the Oracle of Omaha, Warren Buffett, deems it a bad investment. As many of you know, Warren Buffett, the billionaire finance guru and chairman of Berkshire Hathaway, has long remained a vocal critic of Bitcoin. He sees cryptocurrencies as unproductive assets and firmly believes that assets need to have intrinsic value and be widely accepted as currency to be considered a worthwhile investment. Meanwhile, his investment firm, Berkshire Hathaway, continues to make substantial investments in more traditional sectors, investing over $51 billion in the first quarter of this year, alone in companies like Chevron, Occidental Petroleum, HP, and Activision. This stark contrast between Buffett's investment choices and the growing popularity of Bitcoin raises some interesting questions about the future of investing. So, buckle up as we explore why one of the world's most successful investors shuns Bitcoin. And remember to like, subscribe, and drop a comment to support our channel. Warren Buffett has always been open about his skepticism towards cryptocurrencies. Indeed, the billionaire investor and finance guru has made no secret of his doubts concerning the world of digital currencies like Bitcoin. Buffett's fundamental argument against cryptocurrencies is that they are not productive assets. In traditional investment terms, a productive asset is something that generates income or appreciates over time like a business, real estate, or stocks. These assets produce value, whether it's a service, a product, or dividends. Cryptocurrencies, Buffett asserts, do not fit this description. They don't produce anything of value. Their worth is purely speculative, hinging on the hope that someone else will pay more for them in the future. Furthermore, Buffett believes that for an asset to be valuable, it must be widely accepted as a medium of exchange, that is, a currency. And while cryptocurrencies are gaining some traction, their acceptance is still far from universal. Many businesses, governments, and individuals remain wary of digital currencies, limiting their practical use. Buffett's stance on Bitcoin is so resolute that he once declared he wouldn't buy it even for $25. That's a pretty bold statement, considering that at the time of saying this, the value of Bitcoin was well into the thousands of dollars. Yet Buffett remained unswayed by the rising tide of Bitcoin enthusiasts and investors standing firm in his conviction. But why is Buffett so skeptical about cryptocurrencies? The answer lies in his investment philosophy. Buffett is a value investor at heart, and he bases his investments on intrinsic value, the underlying tangible worth of an asset. Cryptocurrencies with their volatile prices and lack of physical presence do not fit into this philosophy. Buffett's skepticism is rooted in his investment philosophy, which we'll delve into next. So stay tuned as we dive deeper into the mind of one of the world's most successful investors and explore why he believes that Bitcoin is a bad investment. A key to understanding Buffett's aversion to Bitcoin is understanding his investment philosophy. Indeed, 
Warren Buffett is a firm believer in value investing. This approach involves seeking out businesses that are undervalued by the market, investing in them, and essentially becoming a part owner. Buffett's philosophy is based on the principle that investing is about buying businesses, not just buying stocks. This guiding principle can be seen in the operations of Berkshire Hathaway, the multinational conglomerate holding company Buffett Chairs. Rather than investing in speculative assets like cryptocurrencies, Berkshire Hathaway places its bets on businesses with intrinsic value that generate profits over time. Recently, the company has made significant investments in Chevron, Occidental Petroleum, HP and Activision. These are all companies with established business models, tangible assets, and consistent revenue streams. Buffett's investment philosophy is not about quick returns or getting rich overnight. Instead, it's about the slow but steady accumulation of wealth over time. Buffett often compares investing to a snowball rolling down a hill, gathering more snow and growing larger the longer it rolls. This is why he prefers businesses that have a proven track record of profitability and the potential for long-term growth. Chevron and Occidental Petroleum, for instance, are part of the energy sector, a critical component of the global economy. HP and Activision, on the other hand, operate in the technology and entertainment industries, sectors known for innovation and growth. These investments reflect Buffett's belief in placing his money where value is created and sustained. In contrast, Buffett views Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies as non-productive assets. They don't generate income or dividends, nor do they have intrinsic value. Their price is mainly driven by supply and demand dynamics, making them highly volatile and risky. For Buffett, this doesn't align with his philosophy of value investing. Clearly Buffett's philosophy aligns with assets that generate value, something he believes Bitcoin lacks. This is a fundamental reason why the Oracle of Omaha remains skeptical about the world's most popular digital currency. Buffett isn't shy about critiquing Wall Street either. The Oracle of Omaha has been quite vocal about his discontent with Wall Street's way of doing business, especially its focus on quick profits rather than long-term value creation. He's often compared Wall Street to a casino, where the house always wins, and the average investor often ends up on the losing side. In a backhanded compliment to Wall Street, he's noted that they've mastered the art of making more money from gambling than investing. It's almost as if the stock market has become a high-stakes poker game, where the focus is on playing the odds rather than investing in fundamentally sound businesses. Buffett's disdain for this approach is rooted in his belief that investing should be about buying into businesses, not betting on stock prices. This criticism of Wall Street's gambling tendencies is not just a critique of the financial sector, but also a reflection of Buffett's investment philosophy. He's long been a proponent of value investing, an approach that involves buying stocks that are undervalued and holding on to them for the long term. It's about understanding the intrinsic value of a business, not speculating on its future stock price. Now let's circle back to Bitcoin. It's not hard to see why Buffett would be skeptical of it as an investment. To him, Bitcoin represents the epitome of speculative investing. It's not backed by a tangible asset or the profitability of a business. Its value is driven largely by supply and demand dynamics, which are influenced by investor sentiment, not business fundamentals. In Buffett's view, investing in Bitcoin is akin to gambling, not investing. It's about buying low and selling high, not about understanding the underlying value of what you're buying. And this is where his criticism of Wall Street dovetails with his skepticism towards Bitcoin. To sum it up, Buffett's criticism of Wall Street's gambling tendencies reinforces his skepticism towards speculative investments like Bitcoin. Despite Buffett's age, the future of Berkshire Hathaway remains a topic of interest. The question of succession looms large given the advanced age of both Warren Buffett and his right-hand man, Charlie Munger. As these two stalwarts of finance contemplate their legacy, the direction of Berkshire Hathaway's investment strategy is a subject of keen speculation. Could the change in leadership herald a shift in the company's stance on Bitcoin? It's a tantalizing question. Buffett has been famously skeptical of cryptocurrencies, dismissing them as unproductive assets. His investment philosophy, grounded in the tangible value of assets, finds little to admire in the ephemeral world of digital currencies. Yet the world of finance is not static. New leaders at the helm of Berkshire Hathaway may bring fresh perspectives and approaches. Cryptocurrencies, despite their volatility, have been carving out a niche in the financial landscape. They have attracted a new generation of investors drawn to their potential for rapid growth. But remember, 
This is Berkshire Hathaway we're talking about, a company built on the principles of value investing. A company that has always prioritized long-term stable growth over quick profits. A shift towards speculative assets like Bitcoin would represent a radical departure from decades of established investment philosophy. It's also worth noting that Buffett's skepticism of Bitcoin is not a rejection of technology or innovation. After all, Berkshire Hathaway has significant investments in tech giants like Apple. Rather, it's a reflection of his belief in the importance of intrinsic value, a belief that has shaped Berkshire's investment strategy for over half a century. As the future unfolds, the leadership of Berkshire Hathaway may change, and with it, perhaps even its investment strategies. The world of finance will be watching with bated breath. However, even as the future unfolds, Buffett's lessons on investing, including his views on Bitcoin, remain invaluable. So, is Bitcoin truly a bad investment? We've delved into Warren Buffett's perspective and his skepticism is clear. He believes in investments that hold inherent value and offer productivity, and in his view, Bitcoin does not fit that mold. Buffett's stance is rooted in decades of investment experience and a philosophy that prioritizes long-term value over short-term gain. He sees Wall Street's speculative behavior as more akin to gambling than investing, and he extends this criticism to Bitcoin, which he sees as an asset driven by speculation rather than productivity. But remember, the world of investing is diverse. Opinions on Bitcoin are divided, and there are many who see it as a valuable asset. Warren Buffett's perspective is but one of many, but it certainly offers valuable insights. His experience and success in the world of investing command respect and careful consideration. Whether you agree with Buffett or not, his perspective offers crucial insights into the world of investing. Remember to like, subscribe and comment. Until next time, keep investing wisely.